Jim Romer from Weather Well. Let's talk about the USDA reports coming up around noon Eastern time on Friday and also why cotton and also grains are rallying again, not just because of the weaker dollar, but the drought covering 60% of the U.S. cotton belt, one of our best trades for our Weather Wealth clients the last few weeks, and the Western Corn Belt still in the midst of drought, even with some rains over the last week or so. But people should be smiling. Yes, even me. I do look like Bozo the Clown. Uh, my apologies, because the commodity markets are rallying back. And indeed, uh, we had exciting times once again. Sorry for that resemblance in the grain market. What usually happens with the USDA reports, they are off 65 to 70 percent of the time. There'll be a major move, most likely, in corn and or beans after noon on Friday. But look at this. Equal chances for both uh, the soybean and corn crop estimates to be much different. At least one and a half to two bushels per acre final yields will be different than what the USDA says on Friday for both soybeans and also for the corn market as well. That's corn. Notice uh, big differences up to five and a half bushels per acre difference by the September October crop report for corn likely. And what do you think that this report will actually not show the full extent of the damage in the Western Corn Belt um, because of all this recent dryness, as you see here over Missouri, central to Western Iowa, areas like that. So this estimate projected uh, on Friday could be about 175.9 bushels per acre for corn and 51.1 bushels per acre for soybeans could actually be lower than this. And this is one of the reasons, as well as the weaker dollar, that grain prices have actually soared. What we have been following for our weather wealth clients is this potential surge again, which we call particularly in cotton and now maybe even cocoa in soft commodities. Look at this, how the Soft commodity index dropped about 10 to 13 percent during July and early August because of the stronger dollar and recession fears. Since then, there are weather problems again for coffee, for cotton, maybe even sugar, with some dryness in Europe, of course, and also Northeast India. And we're watching cocoa for clients as well. Typically during La Nina, you don't see a major drought or world production drop. Typically, it's in the red, the El Nino you see there back in the 2014 to 2015 time frame. But we are seeing some changes in weather patterns right now that could mean a bullish reaction in cocoa as well. Again, the main thing we're watching for clients is, of course, the mixed results for corn and soybean crops. Very confusing and mixed yields for sure, with areas from Illinois eastward, generally normal to above normal yields, but the red uh, and uh, the orange you see from Iowa into much of Kansas and Nebraska, of course, is the below normal rainfall over the last 30 to 45 days. That's gonna make this USD report very, very interesting. We have advice on how to use options and futures. What to do after this year's the report? Do you buy corn and soybeans or do you sell them? What's the weather forecast? We invite you to subscribe to our Weather Wealth newsletter. We have clients all over the world in 12 to 15 countries that have benefited everything from natural gas to grains, coffee, and cocoa. Weather is a driving force in these markets, so please join us. Enjoy.